Okay, so we talked about cold clouds, and cold clouds are clouds that uh, have the Bergeron process going on throughout them. Warm clouds, then, would be clouds that um, the temperature even at the top of the cloud is warmer than 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 degrees Celsius, so basically up here even we have liquid water. And it forms not by the Bergeron process, by, by something I'm going to describe called the collision, which basically liquid water particles are colliding, coalescence, which the word coalesce means to kind of come together, so the collision coalescence process. So I think I might have mentioned, but the, in order for these liquid water droplets to go ahead and precipitate, they need to be a certain size to what we say fall from the cloud as precipitation, certain mass. Uh, later on in the course, we're going to talk about what they're trying to overcome <coughs> Graphi uh, with their gravity is actually this thing called an updraft. All around, there is kind of a gentle ongoing updraft of air. And so they're trying to overcome that as they fall from the base of the cloud. Um, this slide reminds you that we talked about different types of cloud condensation nuclei. One of them are hygroscopic. That would be water-loving, CCM, cloud condensation nuclei. The other one are hydrophobic um, nuclei, cloud condensation nuclei that actually don't like water, and yet they get water to get together and liquefy. I think that's funny. Um, I like this concept. Uh, let's see how much I want to go ahead and put up here. This is the idea of terminal velocity. And there was a, a movie a while back called Terminal Velocity. And I, I am just amazed, and I don't know all there is to know about this, like I don't know all there is to know about a lot of things. But basically, as an object falls because of the influence of gravity, Depending upon, well, let's just put it this way, it's supposed to accelerate forever. Accelerate at 9.8 meters per second for every second it falls. It's supposed to go ahead and get faster and faster and faster, okay? But there is this thing called terminal velocity, and basically it has to do more with, I guess I'd call it aerodynamics, kind of the environment around which the object is falling, and kind of the aerodynamics of the object itself. It basically will max out at a particular velocity, and we call that the ter its terminal velocity. So a terminal velocity is a falling object, falling under the influence of gravity, will no longer accelerate terminal velocity. And the biggest factor, especially as we talk about, we're going to talk about little, this is my, see if you remember what this is, this is my little liquid water droplets falling within a cloud or from a cloud. The speed at which they fall, their velocity or terminal velocity, is most associated with their size. Okay, size is the biggest factor. And specifically, and this is kind of intuitive, you might already know this, that the smaller water droplets will travel more slowly. And the larger water droplets will travel more fastly, or fastly, faster, as they fall through the Earth, fall through, um, as they're drawn to the Earth uh, by gravity. Their terminal velocity will be faster. So just to kind of show you, for instance, if we have uh, little cloud droplets within a cloud, say uh, 0.01 millimeters, which is still pretty large, um, its terminal uh, velocity is 0 0.006 miles per hour. Large raindrops, 20 miles per hour. See that its terminal velocity is a lot larger, and this has consequences. So I'm putting all of these up here. Um, Drizzle, or even, to me, um, I, fog. I, I feel like if you were to just kind of look at uh, um, a light precipitation, um, I know fog's not a precipitation, but don't you think if you look at fog, sometimes you can actually kind of see those liquid, little liquid particles just ever so gently falling to the earth. 
it's drizzle the same way, okay? Drizzle if you kind of stand still long enough to look for those little liquid droplets. See how fast or how slowly they fall to the earth. Compare that to rain. I mean, rain, it falls. Terminal velocity is pretty high. Um, but you know what's, who's tr what's terminal velocity is very high is hail. <laughs> we'll see that here in a minute. Um, all right. So... Yeah, I think I kind of said that. Uh, cloud droplets, we're going to talk about and how they, when it's time for them to fall uh, from the cloud. We're going to talk about the collision coalescence process. Okay, and during this process, the cloud droplets get larger and larger because they need to get a certain mass in order to fall from the, uh, fall from the cloud in what we call precipitation. All right, so there's this thing called collision efficiency. Now, we're going to look at some animations or, or a figure here in a minute, and there's going to be the collector drop, dun, dun, dun. and the collector drop is going to be the thing that is on its way down to fall from the cloud. And as it collides with um, other uh, liquid droplets in the cloud, it won't basically... Um, It'll collide with lots of them, but not all of them will um, go ahead and coalesce into that collector drop. Okay. Um, and we're, the picture shows you here in a minute, but uh, collector, large collector drops, we talked about terminal velocity of them, should be, they should go, be going faster, shouldn't they? And we're going to see that they are going faster, and they basically kind of then can smash into the smaller, uh, slower moving ones. But what we're going to see is that kind of at the front, as the large collector drop falls quickly through the cloud, they create a kind of a high pressure. Um, and that high pressure then kind of scoots away uh, little slower moving droplets that otherwise might have collided and coalesced. I kind of liken it to if there's like a feather falling through the air and you want to go catch that feather, so as your hand goes towards that feather to catch the feather that's falling through the air, sometimes that feather will scoot away from you. And the reason that feather is scooting away from you is you've created like a high pressure or um, kind of a wind basically in the vicinity of the feather. And that's what we run into with collector drops falling through um, slower moving um, light little cloud droplets that they want to gobble up in the collision coalescence process. So I think this figure does a pretty good job. So there's our large collector drop and notice that its terminal velocity is faster than the terminal velocity of these smaller droplets. Okay, so for that reason they are going to generally, we think, collide. But here is that, um, and we'll talk more about pressure, uh, differences in pressure, but here's a high pressure basically kind of created on the front of the drop as it falls through the collector drop as it falls through the atmosphere. And so from this high pressure, we kind of see a squirting away, and that's kind of like the feather tries to get away from your hand as you're trying to get it, kind of a squirting away. Now, now, not all of those cloud droplets, uh, the little cloud droplets scatter away. Some of them go ahead, successfully collide, and successfully become part of the collector drop. Now, the, uh, the amount that successfully collide and successfully become part of the collector drop is known as the collision efficiency. You saw on the previous slide. So this is kind of cool. Um, when we think of, I used to anyway, before I started teaching this class, when I think of rain falling through the atmosphere, or excuse me, falling to the ground, sometimes we kind of think of the tear shaped of a liquid water droplet. This would be our liquid rain droplet, and it's not the case. Here in a minute I'm going to show you that it looks more like a donut or frisbee. So here is kind of, these are talking, talking you through kind of the collision 
coalescence process. This is our collector drop you're going to see in the next few slides. And notice that it's getting it's getting larger. Okay. And I mentioned kind of the donut shape, it kind of flattens out like this, and it kind of makes sense. But if I were able to animate this, you'd actually see it kind of wobbling. And I've seen little videos of that where this thing gets kind of large and kind of wobbles. And you can't see it wobbling here, but it's getting larger and larger. That's our collector drop that's going to fall from the base of the cloud. And in fact, I mentioned the wobbling. It can wobble so much that basically it can um, go ahead and wobble apart. Notice here that that large collector drop has broken into smaller particles. Depending upon where that is in the process of falling from the base of the cloud, you know, those could become collector drops, I suppose or basically it could fall from the base of the cloud in that size. This, um, I'll go ahead and include this in this part, this breaks down uh, the difference between a cold cloud, a cool cloud, and a warm cloud. And I kind of wanted to address this earlier, so like I think a segment earlier I talked about the difference, but basically a cold cloud is one that you have the, the oh man, this wasn't collecting the whole time is one that you have the Bergeron process going on uh, throughout the cloud because it's cold enough to go ahead and have ice in its solid state. And then a cool cloud has the uh, Bergeron process going on at the top, but kind of this, it, it liquefies before it falls from the base of the cloud. So then we have the coalesce, collision coalescence process going on.